Welcome to another edition of Fentress Film Session. Today I'm going to take a closer look at Oregon quarterback Tyler Shuck's first career start, which took place Saturday against Stanford during a 35-14 Oregon victory. Shuck completed 17 of 26 passes for 65%. He threw for 227 yards, one touchdown and one interception, and he also rushed for 85 yards and a touchdown. Although Shuck did make a strong debut for Oregon, he did make some errant throws and bad reads that, even he said after the game, he would love to have back. We're going to start by looking at Tyler Shuck's throws downfield. Now, last year against Nevada, we saw him complete a ton of short passes. He did the same against Stanford. We're not going to break those down. They're pretty easy. You see a slant there. You see a dump off. You're going to see a flat route to DJ Johnson. Had a nice game. You can see a flat route here to DJ Johnson for a touchdown. What we didn't see against Nevada were deep balls. We saw them against Stanford. First play up, you've got Micah Pittman out there, the number one receiver with the number two receiver is going to run a post inside. Pittman's going to go deep, play action pass by Shuck. Now, this is the play where Micah Pittman made the ridiculous one-handed grab, but he didn't do that out of necessity because of the throw. He did that because he was jostling with the cornerback who was sort of grabbing at each other. Look at the placement of the ball, though. You see Pittman leaning to die for it with one hand, but that ball was placed perfectly. If he didn't have to jockey for position with that DB, he could have caught this in stride and maybe gained more yardage. This is a perfectly place pass let's see it again in fast motion uh you know this is what we want to see from him can he go deep like this with touch and this is gorgeous i mean that's going to drop right there perfect throw great catch next up we have a deep toss to giant johnson the third now this is going to be completed. It's going to be a great catch by Johnson. It's not a horrible pass, but it definitely could have been better. Uh, as you can see right here, Johnson has his guy beaten. This ball needs to be put out way in front of Johnson where only he can go get it. Instead, Johnson is going to have to slow up, turn around, and catch it here when the ball should have been caught in the end zone in stride. So this is an underthrow that Johnson made a great um, catch on. So, you know, had he thrown it as well as he threw the Pittman pass, this would have been an easy touchdown. Not easy, but a touchdown. Instead, he did underthrow him a tad. Shuck, without a doubt, established himself as a dangerous rusher, both on running plays and escaping the pocket. On this play, Stanford's going to get some pressure on him. Now look, Shuck's going to have time to play fake, take a three-step drop, and take three hitch steps. The offensive line did a great job. He has all day, but there's nobody open. Does he force it? No. He steps up in the pocket and then looks for the skate route, and he is off. Now, it's just a four-yard gain, but a four-yard gain is better than a sack or a forced throw. On this next play, you see you got three receivers to the left, all running to the right. There's going to be seven Stanford defenders in coverage. Shuck drops back. No one's open. Shuck doesn't force. He doesn't try and stand around forever. He sees a lane to the left. Why is it wide open to the left? Because all the receivers ran off all the DBs to the right. So there's no one out there. So this is a guy who was aware enough to know where the pass rush was coming, where his receivers were going, and where the empty part of the field would be where he could run to for big yards. Now this play right here, we, you know, it's a design quarterback run. There's nothing there. He gets a guy in his face. He cuts back the other way. I mean, this is just awareness and athleticism. No need to break it down. Uh, this demonstrates that this guy is dangerous no matter the situation. The only cause for concern regarding Shuck's performance was that he made three pretty bad reads on passes. One was picked, two almost were. Let's take a look at those. Remember earlier when Stanford rushed seven and Shuck recognized no one was open and escaped to his left? Well, he had a chance to do that on this play, but he does not take advantage of it. To the left, Tyler Shuck has two receivers that are going to go across the field to the right. Habibi Likio is going to come out of the backfield and show like he's going to the flat and then run a crossing route. The back is actually going to be the only guy open, but Shuck is looking at the middle of the field. His other option is to just cut bait and run to the left where Habibi Likio can make a block for him. Instead, he forces it over the middle between two guys to try and get it to red, and instead it's intercepted. Poor read, bad decision. This next play presents a little bit more difficult situation for Shuck. He's going to begin the play by looking right to a flat route from Verdell, and DJ Johnson is running downfield. Neither guy is open, so he's going to come back to the left, which shows, hey, he's got the ability to scan the field. Michael Pittman on a crossing route is sort of open, but there is a guy right there you can't see, so he avoids that, steps up. Now he could plant his feet and run and escape the pocket, but instead he forces it to Lord knows who. There's a DB right there. Now it's easy to say from you know my office that they shouldn't have made that throw, but let's look from behind the quarterback's view. Again, he's looking to the right. Those guys aren't open. He wisely comes back to the left, which is smart of him. Scan the field. You've got time. But there's no way he sees He's an open receiver. I don't know what he's looking at. If he's trying to throw someone open or what, he should have planted and tried to get out of there. He did not, and that ball should have been picked off. This next play is a little bit perplexing because I'm not positive as to what Oregon was trying to accomplish. 
the three receivers to the right are going to go vertical. You're going to have a crossing route going left to right, and the back is going to swing into the right flat. Stanford is going to cover this play pretty well with the slot defender dropping at first and then jumping to take away the flat from the running back. Shuck immediately almost is going to pump fake the back. Now, either he's pump faking him because he wants the defense to believe they're going to throw to the back and then go behind them to one of these vertical routes, or he pump faked it because he saw the defender fly and take away the running back. Either way, the guy who's open is the crossing route. Instead, he goes deep into the end zone. Now, I can hypothesize here that his hope was that Red, the middle receiver there, was going to keep going past the safety and get to the back of the end zone, but Red hooks up a little bit. Mass confusion. Either way, that ball should not have been thrown into the end zone. It is clear from this game, this performance by Tyler Shuck, that he has the tools, man. This guy has every measurable you could possibly want in a future star quarterback. The only concern is he did make three bad throws. If those DBs could catch the ball, that would have been three picks. Does that change the game along with some made field goals by Stanford, which missed four? Yeah, it probably does. So moving down the line, he can't make those types of mistakes and keep winning football games. He needs to clean that up. I imagine that he will. He seems like a bright guy. He also displayed throughout most of the game that he had command of the offense. He knew what he wanted to do with the football for the most part. Those are all good signs, but he needs to improve if the Ducks are going to actually win the Pac-12 title.